Welcome to Fathers of the Faith for Covenant Kids, where we look back on the church fathers who raised the ramparts which defend our faith to present day. This episode, we are learning about Athanasius, Bishop of Alexandria. You might be familiar with his involvement in the development of the Nicene Creed and his defense of sound doctrine against the Arian heresy. Let's take a closer look. My name is Grant. Joined with me is my beautiful wife, Erica. Hey, guys. And my three saplings, the oldest, Lila. Hi. And my middleest, Eddie. Hello. And my youngest, Nora. Hi. We thank you for joining us on this episode. Today, we are going to talk about the church father, Athanasius. Yes, we are. Who was Athanasius, Edward? A gangster. <laughs> no, <laughs> the, not, but... Who was he really, Lila? Bishop. He is a bishop. Athanasius was born around the year 298. 198? So that means he was born 298 years after Jesus was born. Where was he born? Do you guys know? Um, I have, I no, have idea. no idea. So he was born in Alexandria, Egypt. Mm-hmm. That That's was, a friend's name. That was a Roman providence. Rome was the ruling empire of the world at this time, so even Egypt was over... Roman rule right now. But that's where he was born, in Egypt. You guys are familiar with Egypt. He knew Greek so well, and he knew Coptic, which is the language of those in Egypt. He knew those languages so well, he had a good education. Okay. Okay. Before him, the bishop at Alexandria was, no joke, his name was Alexander. Wait, his name is the place that he (laughs) lived. Pretty. But Bishop Alexander of Alexandria trained Athanasius and trained him up as a deacon in his church, and Athanasius then became his secretary of the church. What's a secretary? Secretary? Yeah. A secretary is someone who works for someone who's really important, and they help them do a lot of their paperwork, and they help them do a lot of scheduling, and um, they're almost like a personal assistant. Yeah. That's cool. And that means Athanasius was the one coordinating all of his stuff. So when Alexander got old, it was the natural choice to have Athanasius replace him as bishop of Alexandria. So around this time in the church, there was a man named Arius, and he was trying to get the church to believe a doctrine that said that Jesus wasn't God. What is his name, Nora? Arius. Arius. His teachings people called Arianism. All right? See, it sounds just like his name. Yeah. A lot of times, someone's teaching was just named after that person. Like Calvinism? It was named after John Calvin. And like there's Lutheran churches, and they're followed after Martin Luther. Makes sense, right? Kinda. The church ruled that Arianism was unorthodox. That means it was a false teaching. It and was heresy. It was heresy, and no one is allowed to teach it. Wait, was it that God was Lord or that God wasn't? It was that Jesus was not God. It was that Jesus was like God, but he actually wasn't truly God. That's really bad. Because of this teaching, they had a council in the city of Nicaea, and what came out of it was the Nicaean Creed. And that creed specifically says that Jesus is God. He's not just like God. He actually is God, okay? Okay. And that's a good... We sometimes recite that in church. Okay. So, but we call them. Do you good. think that all the people in Athanasius's church in Alexandria just said, "Yay, we love the Council of Nicaea and we love the Nicene Creed"? A lot of people in the church in Alexandria, where Athanasius was, yeah. they liked Arius. Kind of so, get this, you guys: if you get kicked out of your hometown because people don't like you, what that's called is being exiled. Exiled? Exiled. It means we're kicking you out. We don't like you. We don't like what you're saying. Get out. Is that what happened? I'm pretty sure that's what happened to the pastor. That the people It did. Athanasius? It happened five times. That's crazy. He loved his city so much. Even after being exiled all those times, every time he loved his city so much, he went back and tried to preach the Bible and tried to show them that from God's word that the Nicene Creed was correct and that Arius was wrong. And he got exiled five times, you guys. That's just crazy. Hey, what does that tell you about Athanasius? That he was very, very 
loving to God. Yeah, it tells me that he was a fighter. He didn't want to give up. Because man should stand up for what is right. Right. And what's the main story of the whole Bible? The main story of the whole Bible is slay the dragon and get the girl. So Athanasius was following that main story of the Bible, right? By fighting and fighting against the enemy? Fighting against the heresy and the untruths? Oh, a real strong guy of the gospel is someone who stands up for the gospel and someone who is like Jesus. Right. Yep, and Athanasius was trying to represent Jesus correctly, and it was exactly what the Bible teaches. Well, he was heralding Jesus as God. Arius didn't want to say that Jesus was God. He was just like God. But Athanasius said, he's not like God. He is God. So that's what a a real man will do, right? Is proclaim Jesus as Lord, as God. The Nicene Creed was very important for the church to clarify what they believe and clarify what it is the Bible says for all the churches. Athanasius also gives us a great example of what our pastors should be doing. Our pastors should be standing up against untruths and against heresy and false teaching, right? Mm -hmm. They are the shepherd of the flock and need to protect the flock from false teaching. And Athanasius is a great example. And every little boy who might be listening needs to do the same thing, right? Well, every girl too. But especially little boys who are going to grow up and lead their families, they need to know what's true and stand for what's true So they can protect their families against false teaching as well. So they can be the leader of their home. Just like Athanasius was a leader in the church. I think it would be be more likely for boys. Well, everyone should know truth. But boys are the leader of their home, right? Yeah. Yeah. Or will be the leader of their home. So after his fifth exile, Athanasius was allowed to come back and the rulers supported him. And finally the church was believing correctly. And so he was able to be a pastor until he died. And he died when he was 75 years old. 75? That's pretty old. Yep. And in his old age, he was allowed to just do his bishop duties of being a pastor and writing and serving Christ church. That's one loving... So that's a great ending of a very struggle-filled life. A <laughs> yeah. Tri- trial-filled. A trial-filled life ended pretty glorious. To this day, we still recite the Nicene Creed in our churches and in our family worship. His contribution to the church was very important because he helped us to solidify that Jesus was, in fact, God. And and he helped us to understand properly the Trinity. We also have the Athanasian Creed that was named after him. And this helped the church clarify and be able to explain the doctrine of the Trinity. Mm-hmm. The Athanasian Creed named after him wasn't actually written until a few hundred years later, but one of the great statements that help us understand the Trinity is in the third paragraph of the Creed, and it just says that Christian faith is that we worship one God in Trinity and Trinity in unity. Can you guys repeat that after me? Say, we worship one God in Trinity. We worship one God in Trinity. And Trinity in unity. And Trinity in unity. Good job. So we can see that the church benefited from Athanasius even hundreds of years after that because they developed a creed off of his teaching. And obviously, we learning about him today can still benefit too. That's actually really cool. So let me ask you a question. Where was his church? Where was he born and where was he a bishop? Alexandria. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And what country is Alexandria in? Alexandria. Uh, uh, Egypt. You're right. Good job. Did he start out as a bishop? No. What did no. he do before that? Um, I'm not sure. He, he was a helper, a deacon, and a preacher. Secretary. Secretary. Yep. Yeah. And who did he disagree with, Eddie? Um, the Arian. Arius. What did Arius believe, Nora? That Jesus was or was not God? Was not God. Right. Right. He was like God. So, yeah, Lila. That's right, Lila. What piece of literature did Athanasius help to write 
the Nicene. The Nicene Creed. How can we benefit from learning about Athanasius? Why do you think he's important? an important person for us to know? Can you think of a reason why it would be helpful for us to learn about Athanasius? That he went to the, the exiles. That he did five exiles. And why is that helpful? What can that teach us? That he was exiled and, and came back to the same city and kept teaching truth. What does that teach us? Because he was a strong man and he never gave up. That's right. He kept telling the truth even when people didn't believe him, right? Or didn't want to listen to him. Yeah, it's like Jesus. Even, even though people didn't want to be saved, Jesus saved them. That's yeah. true. All right, well, we thank you for listening and learning about Athanasius of Alexandria with us. We hope you tune in next time for another episode of Fathers of the Faith for Covenant Kids. <laughs>